Welcome to part three of our series regarding polycystic ovarian syndrome. In this episode, we're going to discuss the diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now there's various criteria and methods for doing it. The most popular came from Europe. Uh, a, a conference was held in a place called Rotterdam. So these are called the Rotterdam criteria. I find them uh, very helpful. A woman must have two out of three of these uh, issues to have a diagnosis of PCOS. One of the criteria is irregular periods. And more technically, that's irregular, unpredictable, or something out of the ordinary uh, patterns of ovulation. It's called oligoovulation. It's usually manifested uh, as abnormal or irregular periods. Now, some women can have uh, irregular ovulation and still seem to have monthly uh, menses, uh, but that's the first criterion, uh, oligoovulation or irregular ovulation. The other criterion is signs of high testosterone. Does a woman have bothersome acne or hair growth on the face or the, uh, the tummy? Um, you can uh, measure testosterone as well, uh, but any of these criteria for elevated testosterone uh, is the second thing we look for. The third thing is how do the ovaries look on sonogram. On ultrasound, ovaries are supposed to have little cysts in them. Uh, generally, the more uh, a woman has, the more eggs she has, and that's a good thing. However, if they're not in a random pattern, but if they're distributed around the outside of the ovaries in what we call a string of pearls pattern, this is a polycystic uh, feature. So you, now you have three things that we can look for, and you only have to have two to have the diagnosis. So you could have two of these, two of these, two of these, or all three of these uh, issues uh, for the diagnosis. So that gives you four uh, bundles of categories right there. We haven't even talked about the sub-varieties or flavors of PCOS. So any one of these four patterns uh, can be seen. Now, in order to be diagnosed with PCOS, a woman also has to have other issues or hormone problems excluded. We need to make sure a woman does not have thyroid problems uh, or problems with a hormone called prolactin. Um, there are rare conditions that can mimic PCOS, uh, things called Cushing syndrome. Uh, uh, here's a mouthful, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And the rare, rare, rare testosterone-producing tumor. We don't see these very often. Generally, we look for them if a woman has very dramatic uh, uh, manifestations of high testosterone or if these symptoms uh, come on suddenly. Now, women with PCOS, particularly if they're overweight, are at higher risk for diabetes. Uh, we frequently measure something called a hemoglobin A1C to make sure we're not missing diabetes as well, but that's not really part of the diagnosis. It's part of the uh, risk factors of uncontrolled PCOS. Now where the diagnosis of PCOS can get very tricky is if we have borderline features of these three issues. A woman might be having periods that come maybe plus or minus four days, plus or minus five days. Is this normal for her? Has she been having uh, stressful events in her life? Or are these in fact signs of irregular periods? So sometimes it's not clear cut how irregular is irregular uh, for the menses to count for that first uh, criterion. The second thing is some women are from darker uh, backgrounds, they have different ethnic backgrounds, and they tend to more, grow more hair and they're completely normal. If a fair-skinned red, skinned a red-headed woman, uh, it would take a lot of testosterone uh, for her to grow extra hair. Some Asian women will not grow hair at all no matter how high their testosterone is. So sometimes the signs of high testosterone are tricky uh, to evaluate. When it comes to evaluating ovaries on ultrasound, a young woman with what I call youthful ovaries will sometimes have a polycystic uh, appearance to her ovaries, and it's hard to tell the difference. So you can see these are not black and white issues, and sometimes it can be very tricky. Does a woman have one and a half of these things? Uh, it's, it, it's just... Uh, not clear cut sometimes. Sometimes it's black and white, sometimes it's not, and that's why the diagnosis can be tricky, particularly for general OBGYNs or family doctors. There's also a condition that I call weight sensitive PCOS. A woman is kind of borderline, but if she loses weight and gets down to a, a perfectly normal weight, 
the symptoms go away. Uh, if she gains weight, uh, the signs and symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, manifest themselves. So there are these borderline cases that I believe are weight sensitive and we certainly see this all the time. What's important to remember is whether a woman has frank polycystic ovarian syndrome or borderline symptoms, it is a distinction without a difference. The treatment is the same. So if you think you're having trouble with uh, PCOS related uh, issues, uh, the treatment is the same. It doesn't matter if a woman has the uh, black and white diagnosis of PCOS, uh, the treatment is the same. So, in the following videos, we're now going to talk about the different types of PCOS, and we will start, start talking about the various treatments for the flavors of PCOS we're about to discuss.